Hello and welcome to the Fusion Industry Association's channel. My name is Jeff Peachman and I'm a graduate student at the University of Washington working on flow stabilized Z-pinches. I'm here to present the Fusion News update for July 12th, 2023. So let's get to it. One, the tale of shrimp-inspired nuclear fusion. Two, the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory makes critical contributions to a historic public-private partnership. Three, UK's dream of fusion power by 2040s will need GPUs. And four, D3D National Fusion Facility completes record-breaking 1600-hour research campaign. And like always, I have bonus stories for you at the end of the video. One, the tale of shrimp-inspired nuclear fusion. This story is about First Light Fusion, an FIA member company. Their CEO and co-founder is Dr. Nick Hawker, whose PhD research was inspired by the hunting mechanism of pistol shrimps. They have a large claw, which snaps so quickly that it produces a high-energy shock wave, which stuns their prey. The snap makes bubbles, and the shock waves compress these bubbles so much that a small plasma is created inside, releasing bright flashes of light. Hawker created computer simulations that model how this occurs, and he found that the gas inside the bubbles was inertially confined and compressed in a manner similar to inertial confinement fusion reactors. So he wondered if it could be applied to create a fusion power source. Although the idea wasn't directly applicable, the simulation techniques led to the establishment of first light fusion. So here's how their power plant works. First, they plan to accelerate a projectile to 60 kilometers per second, which is about seven and a half times the speed of a spacecraft in orbit, so that's really fast. This impacts a target, which consists of an amplifier and a bubble of fusion fuel. The amplifier is this solid object that's very carefully designed to focus the shock waves from that impact onto that bubble of fuel. And then that fuel is inertially confined and compressed from all directions. And that's the connection back to the pistol shrimp. They hope to repeat this process once every 90 seconds, to produce energy in a commercial power plant. Unlike most other methods of inertial confinement, they don't require high-powered lasers, so this method should be much cheaper. Personally, I'm very excited to follow their progress, and I love engineering, which is inspired by nature. Two, the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory makes critical contributions to historic public-private partnership. Last year, FIA member Tokamak Energy reached a temperature of over 100 million degrees, in their spherical tokamak ST40. This was a significant milestone because it was the first time that a compact spherical tokamak demonstrated temperatures which are relevant for commercial fusion energy. However, operating a tokamak is incredibly complex and researchers can't interpret their experimental data without associated computer simulations. So this achievement by tokamak energy was confirmed using an advanced computer code called TRANSP, which was developed by the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, or PPPL. This contribution was part of a larger collaboration between PPPL, Tokamak Energy, and Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This public-private partnership has been ongoing since 2019, and it's benefited all parties. Notably, PPPL has its own spherical tokamak in the United States named NSTXU. So discoveries made by Tokamak Energy are applicable to both devices. The collaboration has enabled other scientific discoveries as well, such as better understanding of plasma microinstabilities and a more efficient method for driving current in tokamaks. This collaboration is yet another example of private fusion companies working together with government labs to leverage the strength of both sectors. I hope to see many more partnerships like this, which is a great segue into our next story. Three, UK's dream of fusion power by 2040s will need GPUs. The UK Atomic Energy Authority, or UK AEA, is developing a pilot fusion power plant named the Spherical Tokamak for Energy Production, or STEP. Their goal is to deliver fusion energy to the grid by the early 2040s. To accelerate the design process, the team hopes to leverage supercomputing and artificial intelligence, so they'll create virtual models called a digital twin of the tokamak. Dr. Rob Akers, UK AEA's Director of Computer Programs said that they aim to model, quote, physics which spans the entire assembly from structural forces to thermal heat loads to electromagnetism and radiation. The planned simulations are extremely complex and will require exascale supercomputers. As of today's date, there's only one exascale supercomputer in the entire world in the United States. 
though other countries might have them. To be clear, the UK government has not yet committed to building an exascale supercomputer, but they've begun developing codes and algorithms which are intended to operate on those computers when they arrive in the UK. This software requires specialized skills, so the UK government has entered a partnership with the University of Cambridge and Intel, among others. To achieve the desired performance, they plan to operate tens of thousands of GPUs in parallel, and they want to be able to use GPUs from several vendors such as Intel, N NVIDIA, or AMD. And so they're considering Intel's one API programming model, which should allow them to mix and match GPUs. With so many of these GPUs, data bottlenecks are a huge concern. So Intel will provide a very high speed parallel access file system. The results should give the UK an unprecedented capability which will accelerate their fusion energy ambitions. Four, the D3D National Fusion Facility completes record-breaking 1,600-hour research campaign. The D3D Tokamak has successfully completed a two-year research campaign. For context, D3D is the largest and most utilized magnetic fusion machine in the United States. It's located in San Diego and supports 650 scientists from 19 institutions around the world. During the research campaign, several advances were made, including demonstration of high-performance plasma configurations and a new plasma heating technology called Helicon Current Drive. The campaign also reserved two weeks of runtime for PhD students, and 17 experiments were conducted by students pursuing their theses. And as a grad student myself, I was really excited by that. Looking ahead, the D3D Tokamak will receive major upgrades to enable higher performance. These include a new plasma diverter system and a pioneering new system called lower hybrid current drive. Overall, the successful completion of this research campaign and the planned upgrades solidified D3D's reputation and position at the forefront of fusion science. And finally, it's time for the bonus content I promised you. If you watched our channel last week, Sid Cowley shared a video from the excellent YouTube channel Undecided with Matt Farrell. That video was the first in a three-part series so I've linked the next two videos as bonus. The second video covers first light fusion, which I talked about in my first story. But the third video discusses how nuclear fusion is being applied to produce nuclear medicines. These isotopes are typically created in large particle accelerators, and that may limit which hospitals can provide treatment. But a new technique using fusion may allow us to synthesize these isotopes with smaller machines at much lower costs, which means we can save more lives. This is a great reminder that fusion science is not just about energy. Much like the space program, our pursuit of fusion should result in many technology spin-offs which will benefit everybody. To conclude today's video, I have one final announcement. The FIA conducts an annual survey of its member companies every year, and the 2023 survey report is going to launch today on July 12th. Here's a highlight. We saw 13 new companies join the fusion race this year, and they raised 1.4 billion in funding. We're seeing more companies, more investors, and more jobs in this industry, which is incredibly exciting. That's all the Fusion news. So once again, I'm Jeff Peachman, and thanks for joining me. Please subscribe to the channel for more Fusion news, and check out the links in the description.